हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल लॉजिक मेडिको टुडेज इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक इज स्टर्नोक्लिडो मैस्ट्रॉइड मजल सो इफ यू न्यू टू माय चैनल काइंडली सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल बटन टू गेट द लेटेस्ट नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ द वीडियोस व्हिच आई अपलोड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द स्टर्नोक्लिडो मैस्ट्रॉइड मजल इट्स वन ऑफ द मजल ऑफ द नेक सो द लोकेशन जस्ट नाउ आई टोल्ड यू इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द नेक so neck on three dimension it is a cylindrical structure in 3d it's like a cylinder okay but on side profile it is quadrangular this quadrangular neck has got an obliquely oriented muzzle okay it's called as sternocleido mastoid okay if you twist your neck either to the right side or left side you can see this muzzle becoming prominent okay this is sternocleido mastoid so this sternocleido mastoid muscle the what is the meaning of this muscle sternocleido mastoid so sterno refers to it begins from sternum bone the upper portion of the sternum bone or the breast bone cleido refers to clavicle it begins from the medial side of the clavicle medial one third to be specific or you can just think cleido means clavicle what is this mastoid this conical projection which appears like a breast mastoid means breast like mastoid breast like projection it's called mastoid process of temporal bone since it is going to that bone this muscle is beginning from the sternum and the clavicle at the lowermost part of the neck going obliquely up upwards and posteriorly towards the mastoid process of temporal bone so therefore the name is sternocleido mastoid so this sternocleido mastoid takes origin from two heads so it's a two headed muscles it is one of the two headed muscle okay and there are so many two headed muscle best example for a two headed muscle is biceps brachii which is in front of the arm long head short head of biceps which most of us know even the sternocleido mastoid is a one of the two headed muscle one of the head begins from sternum while the other head begins from the clavicle so two heads are there just now i told you one of the head begins from the sternum another head begins from the clavicle to be more specific the sternal head and it's called the clavicular head so this sternocleido mastoid you should be able to write this diagram on both right side and left side don't think only on the right side you will write like this it's very simple to write the diagram draw one small line here and draw one long line vertical then draw an oblique two curve line that will become clavicle then draw one curve line it will become mandible and drop in a and draw one conical projection then rise it in brown color draw the outline of this muscle and shade the beginning and the ending portion that's good enough for examination purpose or you can shade the entire portion but it will take a more time consuming okay so this is on the right side you are seeing now this is the sternum can see it's starting from the upper portion of sternum and the clavicle if you divide into three parts medial one third middle one third and lateral one third this is the clavicular head begins from the medial one third that's going obliquely upwards towards the mastoid process you can just label what is required mastoid process sternum clavicle medial one third and the name of the muscle sternocleido mastoid additional labeling not required this oblique muscle divides the neck into two triangles anterior triangle posterior triangle that is for your general knowledge but for time being if you just label what is required that's good enough for examination so the origin of this muscle since it has got two heads the sternal head takes origin from which portion of the sternum obviously the upper motion uppermost portion of the sternum which is called the sternum manibrium sternum so it takes origin from the superior part so how to remember this See, this muscle is above the chest okay so it should take from upper surface only right so it is the superior surface of the superior part of the anterior surface of the manibrium sternum okay so obviously from the upper portion also then the clavicular head will take origin from the superior surface again the same example this muscle is in the neck neck is above the chest is clavicle is junction between the neck and the chest so it takes origin from the upper aspect or the superior surface of the medial one third why medial one third 
because sternum is present in midline so it should be the medial one third okay so it's as simple as this superior surface of medial one third of clavicle both of these heads will merge with one another will join with one another and send upwards and backwards to get attached to this process it's called the mastoid process but what most students don't know is the insertion is not only the lateral surface of the mastoid process of temporal bone is most of them will tell because it is there in the question only you should be also able to tell this one there is one line in the neck I mean actually it is there in the skull but we call it as a line of the neck it's called superior nuchal line which marks the junction between the scalp and the neck this superior nuchal line also it will go it goes to the lateral half of the superior nuchal line of this bone occipital bone if you write this you are a genius okay what time being you remember this insertion is lateral surface of the mastoid process of temporal bone also to the superior nuchal line lateral half the superior nuchal line okay because medial half this muscle will come this muscle is trapezius is a muscle of back it's a muscle of upper limb which is there in the back okay the back of the neck and the back of the thorax it's called trapezius that will be there in the medial one third so this muscle is going into the lateral one third the remaining portion hmm? come to the action in simpler words if a muscle contracts it will bring about some movement and that is called action when this muscle acts alone for example left side is acting okay so it will twist the right side is acting sorry and it will twist the neck to the left side if left side acts the person will twist the neck to the right side when both the muscle act then there will be bending of the neck like this it's called the flexion of the neck so I'll tell you one more time when the sternocleidomastoid muscle acts alone it will twist the neck to the opposite side when both the muscles act it will cause flexion of the neck this twisting can also be called as rotation of the neck okay so these are the actions of sternocleidomastoid if you want a difficult way of remembering stuff the actions are unilateral contraction that means acting on one side or acting alone the cervical spine there will be ipsilateral flexion and neck contralateral rotation that is bending of the neck on the one side and rotation of the neck to the opposite side that is the meaning of that what I told in the beginning okay the other one is bilateral contraction when both the muscle contracts at this joint called as atlanto occipital joint the superior cervical spine of the head and neck region there will be slight extension in the uppermost portion that nobody can notice but here maximum the inferior cervical vertebra what will happen the neck will undergo flexion kindly remember this word neck will undergo flexion you don't have to remember everything what is given in the book okay remember the key words on contraction it moves the neck to the opposite side when acting alone when contracting together it bends the neck forward that is called flexion of the neck or neck flexion also the sternoclavicular joint there is a slight elevation of the clavicle and the manubrium which is goes unnoticed but actually it happens slight elevation of the clavicle and manubrium sternum okay this is the additional action which is taking place so coming to the most important aspect nerve supply so th this muzzle of the neck so called sternocleidomastoid is supplied by 11th cranial nerve what is the name of the 11th cranial nerve so spinal accessory nerve initially we had only 12 cranial nerves subsequently I mean 10 cranial nerves subsequently we had an addition of this nerve that's why it's called as accessory accessory means additional nerve later our tongue developed muscles developed and we are able to speak and communicate with one another so later 12th cranial nerve evolved that is hypoglossal nerve for time being sternocleidomastoid is supplied by spinal accessory nerve the 11th cranial nerve the proprioceptive sensations of this muscle that is the position sense even if you close your eye and turn your neck you will know where where your neck is placed in the space that is called proprioception those sensations will be carried by cervical plexus which nerves second and third cervical spinal nerves there are eight cervical spinal nerves in the neck and the second and third cervical spinal nerves will carry the proprioceptive sensations from sternocleidomastoid for time being you remember now supply of sternocleidomastoid is spinal accessor now. so how to test this muscle if you hold on to the chin of the person 
with your hand and ask the person to push your hand with his chin. If he is able to do so, that means his sternocleidomastoid is working on that side. For example, if you ask the person to twist on the right side, that means the left side sternocleidomastoid will become prominent. If you ask him to push onto the left side, the chin has to be pushed to the left side, right side sternocleidomastoid is working. If the muscle is working, that means the nerve is intact or nerve is working. Okay. So that is about how to test the spinal axis. The same nerve also supplies this muscle on the back, which is like one rhomboid shape or trapezium shape. So we call it as trapezius muscle. The same nerve. That can be easily tested by asking the patient to shrug his shoulder. If they are able to shrug against your resistance of your hand, that means again this nerve is intact or it is working properly. In summary, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, it takes origin from the manibrium sternum, anterior and superior surface of manibrium sternum, medial one third of the clavicle sternocleido. It goes upwards laterally and posteriorly to get attached to the outer surface or the lateral surface of the mastoid process. Mastoid and also to the lateral half of the superior nuchal line this is the muscle of the neck it helps in movement of the neck which movement it twists the chin to the opposite side upon contraction the neck will rotate the chin will move to the opposite side when both these muscles the right side and left side when they contract it causes flexion of the neck and slight elevation of these two clavicle and manubrium the nerve supply of this is spinal accessory nerve or the 11th cranial nerve damage to the this nerve results in paralysis of this muscle called as sternocleidomastoid the person will not be able to move his neck appropriately in addition there are two clinical significance like this if a person's neck is always in this position either twisted to the right or left that condition is called as wry neck w r y wry neck not dry okay wry neck it's also called as torticollis what happens uh, if at all if at all there is a spasm of one side the sternocleidomastoid of one side is undergone spasm or there is a trauma to that muscle especially birth trauma during delivery if the obstetrician uses the forceps assisted delivery they have to put it on the uh, skull accidentally if it's touching the neck muscle and there is a trauma to this muscle the bleeding will happen in, within this hematoma will happen the muscle will undergo contracture because of the contracture the person's neck is always twisted to one side so later surgery plastic surgery of the muscle has to be done to retrieve the position of the neck this twisting of the neck to one side either due to spasm or due to trauma or due to a tumor of the muscle it's also called sternocleidomastoid tumor actually it's not a tumor it's a bleeding within that muscle that condition is called as wry neck or torticollis. Okay, the spasm of sternocleidomastoid where the person neck is twisted to one side. Okay, got this? This is in detail about sternocleidomastoid. Kindly like and share this video with your family and friends. Don't forget to press the thumbs up button and like this video. Also, subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of the video. Thank you once again for watching the video and learning from it. Share this video with your friends and make them learn too. Thank you once again.